We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I How many know there, there are th- some things that only God can do? How many know that? I think we fail to remember that there's some things that only God can do. And we try to fulfill these things on our own. We need to understand about grace and understand how God works. It's not that God doesn't need our help in the sense that he does it all by himself. But there are two different spectrums. There are those today that believe they have to do it alone. And then there are those that believe that God does everything. God does it all. But we need to understand is there's a balance. And even though God is the only one that can do some things, that they're actually miracles, something man can't do, he chooses to work with us. He chooses to work with us. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Psalms. We're going to go through several scriptures, many scriptures. Psalm chapter 127. Psalm 127 and verse 1. Except... Notice he starts out with accept. In other words, this is an exception. Except the Lord build the house. They that labor. They that labor. You say, well, that's not how the scripture reads. That's exactly what it means. They that labor. Because it says they labor. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. In other words, they're laboring, but it's all in vain. If the Lord is not the one that's building it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. The message today is going to be based upon the first part of this verse, not the latter part of this verse. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Title of the message, Except the Lord Build the House. Except the Lord Build the House. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this understanding, giving us this revelation of your word to understand, Lord, that There are some things that are impossible for us to do all alone by ourselves. Absolutely impossible. There's no way that we could ever do those things on our own. 
We understand, Lord, that this is your plan to counter the attack of the devil on your creation, to destroy pride, self-sufficiency, to destroy the works of the devil. When we understand that there's some things that we cannot do and we must humble ourselves, we all must come to this breaking point. I can't do it. When we come to this place, Lord, we learn about your grace. We learn about your strength. We learn about your power. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Exodus, Exodus, the 24th chapter, and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. God is telling Moses, come up in the mountain, I'm going to give you something. God is the one that's going to do it. Moses is the recipient. He's receiving this from God, but God is the one that did it. Now let's look at Exodus 31. Verse 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Did you hear that? God gave to Moses two tables of stone that God himself wrote with his finger. Wow. Can you imagine? An intelligent being, God. God is a spirit. You can't see him with your physical eyes. And he wrote his Ten Commands on two tablets, two tables of stone. You would think that Moses would treat those two tables of stone with the utmost of reverence, and he would do everything he could do to protect those stones. You would think, you think he'd guard those things with his life. Exodus 34, 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Cue thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables. Listen, which thou breakest. Anybody listening? God is telling Moses, 
those two tablets you didn't take care of. Those two tablets that I gave you what I wrote with my own finger. You didn't guard them. You didn't protect them. How many know these two tablets after Moses cuts them out, brings them to God, God writes them, the Ten Commandments again, they were placed in the Ark of the Covenant. Very holy, very sacred. Moses comes down from the mount, And he is angry with the people. Now listen, this was not God's anger. This was not God's anger, folks. This was Moses' anger. How many know the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God? Listen to me. Moses allowed, if, if not, he threw them down. The two tablets, the two tables of stone that he was supposed to give to the people. Either he threw them down or he or they fell out of his hands. But I believe he threw them down out of anger. It wasn't the last time Moses would act in self, in disrespect, in disregard. When God would speak to Moses and say, speak to the rock. And Moses smote the rock. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. There's some things that only God can do. Amen? Now, because Moses has disobeyed God. Because he failed to protect those two tablets, those two tables of stone, sacred with God's own hand, written with God's own hand, his own finger, with his own power. Moses now has to cut those out himself. How many know God is the one that cut those stones out the first time? Listen to me, folks. How easy was it for God to cut those stones out comparing to Moses cutting those stones out? If you can understand that, you'll begin to understand grace. Amen. You think it was a real hard thing for God to cut those tablets out of the rock? But it was very difficult for Moses. The the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. It's difficult. Moses had the two tablets with God's own writing in his hands. Listen, people, you can't take away or add to what God is doing. You can get in the way. You can mess things up. You may have to learn some things the hard way like Moses listen people except the Lord builds the house they that labor labor in vain that build it are you listening It was nothing. It took no real power or strength for God to cut those stones out. But can you imagine how difficult it was for Moses 
Thankfully, God did not require Moses to chisel, I guess you'd have to do with the tools they had back then. He would have to chisel the words, the Ten Commands of God. But the Bible says that God himself, with his finger, wrote the Ten Commandments on the two tablets, the two tables of stone that Moses cut out. What was God teaching Moses? The first time God did it. Listen to me, people. When you first get saved, you're first born again, it's so simple, isn't it? It's so easy. But what happens when you mess things up? You got to learn the hard way, don't you? Listen, people, God wants us to depend on him, to do it his way not do it our own way, not to get in the way. God doesn't need us to lead him. Amen. God doesn't need our input. He doesn't need our opinion. Amen. The more I look at this scripture, I realize just how careful Moses should have been with those two tables. And then I think about how careful are we with what God has given us? Hmm? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13 through 15. Whosoever despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Listen. The law of the wise is a fountain of life. To depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor. Listen. But the way of transgressors is hard. Have you experienced that in your own walk with the Lord? Do you remember how easy it was? How simple it was when you first got saved? But somewhere along the way, you got in the way. And some of you have been in the way ever since. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, the difference between you trying to do it and letting God do it. Ezekiel, 11th chapter, verse 19. And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. Who's going to do that? Who's going to put a new spirit within you? You? Are you going to do it? Not any more than Moses Produce the first tablets or tables of stone. I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart. Out of their flesh. And will give them a heart of flesh. Who's going to do it people? Except the Lord build the house. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. 
and will give them a heart of flesh. I will do it, God says. Again, in Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And I will cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Are you listening, people? God is the one that's going to do it. He's the one that's going to take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. There's some things that you and I can't do. The sooner we learn this, the sooner he can do it. When are you going to let the Lord take out the stony heart? When are you going to let him replace that stony heart? Well, I'm saved, Brother Joseph. Yeah, but you still have a stony heart. Only he can take it out. Only he can put within you a heart of flesh. Are you listening, people? Zechariah chapter 4, 6 through 7. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Praise God. Speaking of the temple, Building the temple or rebuilding the temple, rather. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. How much more the spiritual temple. Except the Lord build the house. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Jesus is speaking. Come unto me. All you that labor and are the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is something you can't do. This is something I can't do. Except the Lord build the house, people. How many know there's a lot of labor today in vain? Huh? How many know there's a lot of labor today in vain? Even the foolish man built his house. But the Bible says he built his house on the sand. Amen. A lot of folks today are building in vain. A lot of building going on. Except the Lord build the house. Hmm? Jesus is speaking. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. These are not just scriptures, people. This was Jesus speaking. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Look at the difference between Moses 
cutting out the stone versus God cutting out the stone. How about letting the Lord build the house, people? Amen? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Know ye not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Are we trying to do it? Are we trying to build the house? Are we trying to produce what only God himself can produce? It would seem so. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 through 21. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Paul is saying, I'm dead. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. What do you mean, Paul? How can you live if you're dead? Praise God. If you're crucified with Christ and you're dead, how can you live? It's Christ that liveth in me. How many of you right now can testify? It's Christ. It's Jesus that's living in me. You're not trying to do it. You're not trying to live a Christian walk with God. You're not trying to live it. You're living it. Amen? You're not trying to obey God. You're obeying God. How many of you can honestly say it's Christ that's living in me? The life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now listen, people, listen. I do not frustrate the grace of God. That word frustrate in the original Greek means to reject. I do not reject the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died or is dead in vain. Are you listening? Are you frustrating the grace of God? In your life. Are you rejecting his grace? He said I will take out the stony heart. And I will put within you a heart of flesh. How many of us today are like Moses? Huh? We failed. We blew it. And we're toiling, working difficult, working hard, trying to live this Christian life. It's not easy. It's not simple. Why is it so difficult? Except the Lord build the house. They that build it labor in vain that build it. Luke chapter 5, verse 4 through 7. Now when he had left speaking,
He said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Listen to what Simon Peter says. Listen to what Simon says here. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. We've been working all night. We're tired. And we've taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Anybody listening? Except the Lord build the house. Nevertheless, because you said it, at your word, I will let down the net. How many know that was faith working in Simon? Because it says it was based upon his word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Anybody listening? This is before the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, folks. This is under the law. This is under the old covenant. But let's take a look at after the resurrection. John chapter 21, verse 3 through 6. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. He's going back to where Jesus found him. Anybody listening? This is after the resurrection. They all believe Jesus is dead. How many know he's not the one that's supposed to be dead? We are. Huh? They all think he's dead, including John. And they say unto him, we also go with thee. Where are you going? We're going to toil. We're going to go try and catch some fish. They say unto him, we also go with thee. Look at the influence that Simon Peter is having on them. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. How many of you right now, how many of you right now can relate to this? Hmm? Nothing. Be honest. Be honest. Because the church as a whole is not being honest today. They say they're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. But they were honest with Jesus. They caught nothing. Anybody listening? But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. 
Jesus stood on the shore, the one they thought was dead. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. How many are still like that today? Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, little boys in the Greek, have you any meat? Have you caught anything? They answered him with honesty. Can you be honest with Jesus in your walk with him right now? Can you stop being dishonest? Have you caught anything? Do you have any meat? And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, not the wrong side, people. Except the Lord build the house. Anybody listening? How many of you right now casting on the wrong side? You're trying to do it on your own. And you won't admit the truth. You're producing nothing. You have nothing. And like the church as a whole is saying, we're rich, increased with goods and have need of nothing. But the Lord says, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable, and you're naked. All we have to do, people, is listen for his voice. He said unto them, he said unto them, he said it. Cast the net on the right side of the ship. And you shall find. They cast, therefore, listen, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Anybody listening? They caught nothing. But when Jesus spoke, when Jesus spoke, and they obeyed him, they got results, people. Except the Lord build the house. Maybe you don't hear the anguish of this preacher's spirit right now. But in my heart, in my spirit, I don't have to even know you. I don't have to look at you. I don't have to see you. I know the toil of your hearts. I know. In my spirit, in my heart, I know. The struggle and how hard and how difficult it is. Where are you willing right now to come to the breaking place? Are you willing to come to that breaking place? I feel this presence. I feel the spirit of God, people. Are you willing to admit it? You may be saved, but it's become so difficult to serve the Lord. It's become so hard and difficult. And you're not producing anything. You're not catching anything. Except the Lord build the house, people. It's all in vain. Are you listening? 
It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You mean, Brother Joseph, all I got to do is hear his voice and do what he says to do, and I'm going to get results, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be successful. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to hear his voice. We need to obey his voice. We need to follow him. We need to be doing it his way. Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden's light. If you're finding it difficult to serve God, if it's a drudgery, uh, if it's hard for you to serve God, you stopped listening to him. You stopped hearing his voice. You stopped obeying his voice because it's so easy, people, to serve God. It is so simple. It is so easy. The way the transgressor is hard, not the, not the ones that obey the Lord. It's the transgressor. It doesn't have to be hard and difficult to serve God. That's why there's a lack of joy today. You remember when you first got saved, how joyous it was? That's why the scripture says, you left your first love. Do your first works over again. Praise God, people. Joy unspeakable and full of glory it doesn't have to be a drudgery to serve God. Amen. Praise God. Do we really understand grace? My wife and I were at the park the other day and we saw, I don't believe it was an eagle, but we saw some hawks or something up there and they were soaring. No effort of their own, just soaring above the storm. Anybody listening? Soaring. No effort of their own. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mount up with wings as eagles. How many would like to mount up with wings like eagles? Huh? You tired of being weary? You tired of fainting? I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, I know that this message is from God. I know what the Holy Ghost is saying to my heart. I know what he's telling me. My people find it difficult to serve me because they don't know how to serve me. We're supposed to be serving the Lord with joy, people. Amen? With gladness. Praise God. Joy and gladness. Why aren't God's people the most happy people on the planet? And I'm not talking about the imposters. I'm not talking about the tares. I'm not talking about the false church. I'm talking about the real blood-washed, born-again Christians. Why aren't they the happiest people on the planet? Except the Lord build the house. It's hard, people. It's difficult. Trying to serve the Lord. It's joy unspeakable to serve him. It's joy unspeakable to serve the Lord, people. Joy unspeakable and full of glory, 
full of glory, full of glory, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. God bless you.